What's up everyone? So there are a lot of print price calculators out there, but most of them are kind of garbage because they don't actually show you what the actual costs are. They say things like material and your labor and electricity, but those are not the only expenses in running a print business. You have platform fees, you have taxes, you have labor, you have paying yourself if there's other labor. So what we wanted to do was create a tool that actually shows you pretty much everything and is fast and easy to work with. So we made 3dprintpricecalculator.com, which you can use for free and is open to anyone to where you can just grab a model or just put in some basic slicer settings and find out what a part cost. So I'm gonna walk you through it here right now. So right here on printpricecalculator.com, the first thing you wanna do is kind of put in the number of parts that you make per month. Most Etsy stores generally don't break 100, so I'm just gonna put in 100 there. That's about three orders per day. Bigger stores go bigger, smaller stores go smaller, and if you're starting out, it's really small, but it's important to realize what it costs when you're only making this many parts. Then you have the option to upload a file if you want to. I've uploaded this uh, snowflake cookie cutter as a baseline example here. And it'll do, if you upload a file, it'll do some basic analysis and say, here's some baseline material and baseline print hours based on some set of settings. Um, you can adjust those settings if you want to. So you can change the grams per part if you want to. I'll keep them around the 25 because I think a cookie cutter, this two dual cookie cutter and stamp would be about 25. Then you can set your price for filament. If you're getting filament for 10 bucks, good on you. But you will also notice that the material cost is 25 cents, which is basically nothing. And this is why you do not want to use material as the way that you're pricing your parts because it's just incorrect. But I'm gonna say you're buying filament off of Amazon for 25 bucks that is good quality and doesn't jam your machine. All right, so you have a material cost of 63 cents over here, which is showing up in final pricing. Now let's go ahead and go down to labor cost. What does it take to make this part? Well, you start off with the typical minimum wage, which is about $15 an hour. If you are doing this yourself, you should be putting in your salary. Maybe you're a software developer and you make $150 an hour. Or maybe you are working a really, maybe you're in a different country and you earn $5 per hour. But 15 is generally good if you're in the US. Or again, if you just wanna be paid reasonably well, set it up to 20. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at 20 because that's easy. And then you put in how much time it takes. This is a simple cookie cutter. You probably need to hit it with a heat gun to get rid of hairs and that kind of stuff. If it's something with support, time yourself and find out how long it takes. Because if it takes five minutes to make a part, you have not insignificant labor cost over here of three bucks, three and a half bucks. So you wanna get that done. But for the cookie cutter, it's one minute. Heat gun it, it's quick and easy. But now you have to pack it. How long does it take you to pack a box? Are you putting the cookie cutter in a bag, closing that bag, putting in a thank you card, wrapping it in tissue paper, then putting it in a box, then closing the box, then piling up those boxes and taking them to the post office. This is all time that adds to the cost that you need to account for. Lastly, the last little piece of labor cost in here is customer support. For the 100 orders in a month that we have here, how many of them need customer support? Do you need to process returns? Do people ask what color does this come in for? How long do you have to answer messages on Etsy? Estimate that. I'm gonna go ahead and put in five minutes because it's generally not that bad if you're this small, if you're only doing 100 parts per month, you're probably spending about five minutes per part on customer support. Maybe updating them with tracking information or telling them, yes, it will arrive in time for Christmas. But now let's go ahead and scroll down to shipping cost. And the shipping cost is actually quite interesting because you can just input two zip codes and it'll give you shipping estimations for it. And you can put in the weight of the box and it'll tell you about what the shipping costs will be. And it'll show you both from priority mail, which is faster, and ground, which is the cheapest shipping that's generally available out there. So you got about five bucks of shipping. This is useful of what, if you want to offer free shipping or no. And you can do this right here. If the customer is paying for shipping, great. You know what the customer has to pay for shipping. But if you're going to offer free shipping, you should flip that switch right there. Um, and I'm gonna, just to avoid some problems here, I'm gonna get rid of this. If you're offering free shipping, the cost of shipping is up here in the cost of goods sold, which means that you have to pay for the shipping. Your cost to make this cookie cutter, it might be 25 cents of filament, but you have five bucks of shipping in it and about two bucks worth of labor in there. So shipping is not nothing. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and have the customer pay for shipping. That's gonna decrease your conversion rate, but you have the customer pay for shipping and it's not not on you, but it's important to understand how to price this stuff. Electricity, you can put in your zip code. Are we live in Boise? 
Our electricity is basically for free. We make our electricity from potatoes. So electricity really is not a big part of the cost unless you have like a really long print time part. This cookie cutter only takes whatever half hour worst case to print. If it's like a five hour print, now you actually start to have electricity up here as a cost that you might need to consider. But it's important to realize kind of the distribution of costs and that electricity really doesn't matter. Uh, unless you're in like Southern California, then maybe it's a problem, but generally not a big deal. You can also enter in your electrical rates if for some reason this one doesn't pop up correctly. So you have full control of this if you wanna look at it. Printer depreciation. How many prints does your machine make before it breaks? The easier way to do this is number of hours. So if you're buying like a P1S, you might have 10,000 hours in it. You might have 5,000 hours in it. It might break in a week, but whatever that is, that's how much co it costs to run that machine per hour hour. If it only runs for 5,000 hours, you are paying 25 cents an hour. Now this doesn't matter a lot to a lot of people. If you've got 10 machines, go buy a new machine afterwards if you have good profit margin. But for us in like a giant print farm, if I have a thousand machines out there all losing 25 cents an hour, that's $250 per hour of machines wearing out. That's significant and a company needs to pay attention to it. And finally, get to pay yourself. Now this only applies if you have employees. If you have employees, their cost goes in up here. If you're, and then you have to add in if you pay yourself. If you are paying yourself and you have some else packing and shipping boxes. You need to see how much time you put into here. Okay, 99 parts a month. How much time are you gonna spend on this? 20 hours a month. Let's go ahead and make it 30 so it's one hour per day you're gonna spend on this business. Whatever your real job is, that's what you put inside of here. You might make $15 an hour, you might be a software developer and you might make $150 an hour, or you might be somebody in between who makes like $50 an hour. Enter that because that is how much your time is worth to keep this business running. This is your management, checking in on what your employees are doing that kind of thing. Make sure you're paying yourself. And this isn't even correct because it's not a monthly salary. It's an hourly salary, but you'll be doing way more work than this. But this is how you know how much your time is worth. And if you're only making a hundred parts and you're spending an hour a day with an employee doing all the work, you got a really bad business. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for now, presuming that you're post-processing your parts yourself and packing them on the ship. Next, the rent. How much rent do you cost? Even if it's a corner of a room, you are paying rent for that because it's taking up room in your house that could be doing other stuff. Or you're leasing an office. I'm gonna pretend that you have like a small office with like 10 machines inside of it. That'll probably cost like $500 per month. Now you know how much your rent is per part over here. And you're gonna pay five bucks per part if you're only making five, 100 parts per month. Now, all of this stuff gets better if you make more parts. So if you update that to 1,000, now, oh, rent is only 50 cents per part. This is the difference between fixed costs, which is how much it costs in material to make the piece, and variable costs, which change based on how many pieces you make. But this lets you see what you need to charge for all of this. So if you're making 1,000 parts per month, okay, this cookie cutter, probably costs about five bucks to make if you're not billing for shipping. Now, if you include screws or something like that, I've, you can add in other parts and pieces here. Screws, maybe a thank you card that costs 25 cents. I'm gonna say a thank you card that you bought off of Canva and it costs 10 cents every piece. Now you can log that and you're like, okay, that card is in there. Okay, 463, great. Then you have taxes. This is set up as sales taxes. So generally in our state, sales tax is 6% and you can see what that sales tax is down here. But uh, the thing to watch out for is you also have income tax. When you make this money, 25% is gonna to go to the government. Actually, in most places, 35% is going to go to the government of the cash you make. Uh, so be aware of that. That could be significant and important, but for you to be aware of. All right, finally, sales tax, I'm gonna put it 6%, so we're good on that. All right, your platform fees. You can select whatever platform you want. Maybe you're selling on your own website and it costs nothing. Maybe you're selling on Shopify and you just have payment processing costs and the monthly subscription, which is 40 bucks. Maybe you're selling on portals and there's just no fees again, because portals is totally free. You just pay for the cost of manufacturing. Or maybe you're selling on Etsy and Etsy takes its hunk of flesh, which is two, 20 cents per listing, 6.5 cents for the transaction, processing fees, and then if you're moving a thousand parts per month, you're gonna pay a web advertising fees, which is about a dollar per order. So all of that together shows up over here where you can see that, okay, material costs 50 cents if you've got really expensive material. 
You have $2 of labor cleaning this thing up and packing it. Then you have electricity, which is nothing. You have printer depreciation, which could be something. I'm gonna go and double check this one again. Uh, printer depreciation right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make it $10,000. So printer depreciation is not that big of a deal. Um, hours per print is 0.5. That's better, there we go. Uh, there we go. Oh, printer depreciation. Oh, I put it, there we go. There we go. Uh, and then owner time, you're gonna pay yourself from your labor and then rent and overhead, 50 cents. So it would cost like $4.03 to make it yourself. There is an estimation here for what it would cost to teleport. So like this cookie cutter would be like 435 through teleport. But the difference is you doing everything yourself and not having to do anything with teleport. And teleport costs just a hair more. And if your printer breaks down too early, teleport ends up costing a lot less. Take it with a grain of salt. Now, you wanna set up your margin. How much money and profit do you wanna make here? Well, generally you would look for about a 50 cent profit, which means that this cookie cutter right here, in its size, it's about a three to four inch cookie cutter, you need to sell it for about seven bucks to pay for everything and maintain that margin. And what the total cost is actually going to be is it'll cost you 463 to make it, and then Etsy will add on $2 of platform fees. So you're gonna be paying $6.69 to make this cookie cutter, which means that you're only profiting like 30 cents per cookie cutter, which means that you need to add more. You need to increase your margins there. Now it costs, Etsy takes its pound of flesh again, costs about seven bucks, total to get this thing to a customer. Now you're earning about two bucks per. That is what it looks like. There's your profit. So your retail price is that, you've got sales tax, this is what a customer pays. A uh, customer will pay five bucks in shipping. This is all really important to realize because you realize how expensive and how this stuff builds up and piles up on itself. So you need to make sure that you're in a high margin category. For cookie cutters, most cookie cutter stores run it very passively. We have a cookie cutter store that uses teleport and uh, they pay like the $4 or $3 per, per or something for different types of cookie cutters. This is a really complex one, so it's expensive. If it was just an outline, it would be cheaper. But they put their margins up to like 200%, where they charge 10 bucks for the cutter, but give free shipping and everything else so that it's just handier. Um, so yeah, this is a really handy calculator for setting up what your actual costs are and what you need to price at in order to get up something useful. So check it out at 3D Print Price Calculator and hopefully it helps you grow your business and realize how much you're doing yourself, what all those expenses are and how they can pile up and build on themselves. The platform fees alone can be more expensive than the material or the labor for your part. So make sure you're taking care of those things. Alrighty guys. Good luck and let us know if there's any questions that you have about building your 3D printing business. Have a great day, everybody.